So we're going to do the same thing to fade all around and then just drop the part a little lower. Yep. Right here. Yep. Cool. Let's do it. All right, YouTube. So right here, my client's just pointing out um, where he kind of wants to part. I cut him one time before this. He drives about an hour to two hours to come see me. So shout out to him. We're going to start off with some scissor work on top. He pretty much just gets a connected comb over. We're going to keep it a little longer in the front, near the fringe area. Um, he has a little bit of, uh, you know, light corners, but that's not an issue. We're going to point cut a little bit. Now we're going to connect the sides to the top on this side, the side where like the comb over kind of, you know, hangs over. But that's the point. We don't want it to hang over. We want it to kind of flow right into the shorter hair. After the shear work is finished, I'm going to do a quick styling session just because you don't want to cut the hair when it's wet. And you want to see how it looks. You want to make sure it's all even. Of course, you want to cross check your work. We'll start, we're still working on growing out his crown. The previous barber kind of took it down a little too low. So I didn't really trim the crown. I cut him about three weeks ago. So the crown's still growing out. We're going to begin our fade with my Babless FX Customs. The lever's fully closed. And we're going to do a mid fade, no hooks. We're going to drop it in the back. Now, the tricky thing about his head, he has some uh, indentations in his head. So, you guys will see, the fade will be complete, but if I turn his head in a certain way, it'll look spotty. That's pretty much what indentations are. So, you kind of got to do a lot of detail work with indentations, because you don't want it to be faded, but not, not have it look, you know, blended. You can do a fade and do all your steps, but it still may not look finished. Highest guard we're gonna use is a four. That's gonna go right into the top. Now we begin our fade process. Starting at the bottom. We're gonna work with some guidelines today. So you see how it's already cutting spotty. And we're, we, we didn't switch up what we did. So this is where skill really comes into play. <clears throat> so we're working on the fade. I'm kind of picking which spot to fade at. This isn't a haircut you can just speed through, you know. You got some clients that you can just plow through, but not this one. You got to be very precise with the fade. So I already finished the process. As you can see, it looks faded, but it's not fully faded. So here's the step where we go in in detail with some sheer over comb. Then we're going to move on to the back. I kind of drop it towards the back. He also has some indentations back here. But notice how I keep the fade lower. You do not want to cut into that crown. I see a lot of barbers do this. They're doing a comb over and they just completely disconnect it. Unless your client really wants that. And some do. Some really do. I don't recommend it. But this side we're going to keep this side even lower than the other side in the back. The reason why is because this is the side where it connects into the flow. You don't want it to be an undercut. Make sure you keep this fade real low. Scissor over comb is going to be a best friend on this haircut. Clip over comb too a little bit, but scissor over comb. I like scissor over comb better. Then you could just point cut like this just to take out the dark spots. Now we're going to add in the part. I'm not going to lie. I thought I messed up. I kind of slipped, you'll see it. 
because it's kind of tricky when you're recording because the camera is like right in front of me not on this part but when i turn the camera over i mean turn the clipper over Right there was where I kind of slipped. I kind of took it a little too much, but then I kind of liked it. I was like, hold up. It kind of looked dope a little thicker. So I just made it thicker all the way through and I think it looks better like that. So sometimes mistakes can make the haircut better. It wasn't necessarily a mistake. It just, I didn't mean to go that. I, I slipped cause the camera be like right in front of me and I'm kind of holding the trimmer when you're doing a part, you gotta flip it the complete opposite way and like your your elbows all in the air so you don't have that stability. You know what I'm saying? So, he still came out fresh. We're just gonna hit his vertical bars and his widow's peak. That's all he pretty much gets lined up. Now, something I wanna talk about, I'm not trying to hate on other barbers, but something I personally don't like seeing is when people cut a white person as if they were black or Spanish and what I mean by that you guys know what I mean they make the lines very sharp they add the chalk they add the enhancements they make the hairline very prominent now unless the white bulls rocking like a buzz I'm cool with it but other than that I think the styles just look better with just it being natural you know like this looks doper with it just if we filled in his whole hairline and all that, it would just look kind of goofy in my opinion. But that's all I gotta say about it. We're gonna style it. We use some Tomb 45, the matte clay. We're just gonna position his hair, lay that crown down, kind of blow dry it back. Low heat, low heat. I'm gonna add some texture. And I'm gonna just detail it with some clip over comb. I saw some dark spots I wanted to take out real quick. And after this, I'm gonna switch to some scissor over comb. Using my white wall comb. This is the finished look. He was satisfied with it. So this is how my client came in. And this is how he's leaving. Nice clean fade with some precise scissor work. And dope styling, it's your boy 4, and I'm out. Peace.